Hi, my name is Izzy or Ice Cold, and today I'm going to show you how to get your pre rate bis gear for Druid and Seas of Discovery. We're going to clear all the way through Dead Mines, Wailing Caverns, and SFK to get the juicy blue epic loot. And we're going to do this solo, so we're not relying on any group mates that have to travel to dungeon or compete with our loot. So we're doing the self aligned just getting some starter gear off the auction house. Uh, this will be like one to, to six gold, depending on what you're gonna buy or how much you can craft yourself. So bear with me, and if you want to skip ahead to any of the dungeons or any of the gear, just uh, use the timestamps below the video. Thank you, and let's start. But first off, I'm gonna recommend you to buy some gear on the auction house or craft it yourself because you need some starter gear and these are really really cheap and really good. Um, I'm talking about the dark leather shoulders, dark leather tunic and the dark leather pants. All of these can be bought on the auction house or crafted yourself if you're a leather worker, which I would recommend because you can get so much better gear and you can craft the leather hands, the epic ones from BFD. So. Shoulders, tunic, and pants. Those combined are like one gold, 51 gold, 35. Then adding to that, I would either craft the heavy earthen gloves or even the toughened leather gloves because the toughened leather gloves are uh, the prerequisite for the BFD ones. So you can skip some time by crafting these first. And also, I would recommend you to craft the Deviant Scale Belt because it's really, really good. You could go with the Murloc uh, Scale Belt, but this one's way better. Okay, now before we're starting to solo bosses, uh, I would recommend you to also get those boots. The Warsome Boots from the quest Warsome Supplies. It's a quest in Ashenware where you only have to bring like the deadly blunderbuss and everything else is just pickups in the world. Just check the Wahod entry for all those four pickups and get your Warsong boots, which are pre read bis. For talents and runes, uh, we're gonna use these. There are a lot of different builds that can potentially do this run, but I just find these talents the easiest. I'm gonna put one point in Nature's Grasp. Uh, it's actually not for the run, but I'd like to use this in PvP situations four points in improved wrath because we're going to use this on some pulls five points natural weapons because 10 percent melee damage and one point in omen of clarity omen of clarity is uh, giving a lot of dps and the last five points we have i spent those on furor because uh, i like to power shift um, you can spend those five points anywhere in the tree improved thorns would be probably the most dps boost if you're not power shifting for runes in the chest rune, I'm gonna use Wild Strikes because Wild Strikes is actually the only melee DPS boost. Then we can use Mangle or Sunfire in the second rune slot. I'm using Mangle and switching to Sunfire whenever I'm raged attacking. And Leg, rune, leg Runes, there's only one uh, Savage Roar. When you're switching to um, yeah, ranged attacking, you can also use Star Surge. Also, on the chest runes, if you're really uh, pushing it, you could also use Survival of the Fittest, but it's actually never necessary and only yeah, tanks your time, so stick to Wild Strikes. Yeah, this is our runes and our talent tree. Okay, let's start soloing some bosses, will we? We're starting with the Leggings of the Fang. These drop in Wailing Caverns, and to do that, we just have to kill the first boss. I'm gonna sneak past all of these mobs and yeah, speed up the process so you don't have to bear with me all the time. Uh, everything I clear is just this crocodile and that's it. You can probably speed up the process by killing some more mobs or uh, not stealthing all the way. But we're gonna hit lockout because it's a 5-6 to six minute clear every time. So it doesn't really matter because we're gonna hit lockout. So I'm not speeding up the process anymore than just stealthing through. Which is, by the way, safer. Yeah, just uh, avoid the snakes because they are uh, pathing erratically and you don't want to walk into them. As soon as you hit the boss area, you will see two patrols, this one and this one in the back. Skull actually patrols all the way to the boss, so you will have to wait for Skull to be at the boss and then leave him so you have enough time to clear the boss. 
See, I'm just gonna wait for him to leave again. Uh, don't worry about Cross. Cross will, yeah, path back like in three seconds. Like now, Cross will leave. I'm gonna start on the snakes, full blasting them, and as soon as they are dead, I'm switching to the boss. Uh, just aim to not dip below 40% of your HP because the boss actually has uh, a main hand and an offhand attack which can hit really hard and really fast when he's not casting. So here you see me dropping low, I'm gonna leave him some space and heal up. And finish him off in bear because we're taking way less damage in bear while our damage is not much lower than in cat. Yeah, that's the first boss, just finish him off anytime soon. He actually has a, a belt that's pretty this for warriors. So if you want to sell that to those uh, warriors, they can just stand in the entrance and you can loot here and group loot will auto loot it to them. Yeah, after skinning those snakes, obviously, I got the pants, by the way, I got the pants. This is pre rate bis or even bis uh, in the first phase. After you kill the boss, just lock out on one of these candles here. And as soon as you lock back in, you will see you're at the entrance of the instance. You can just run out and reset the instance and run your second run. Reset. And second item we are going for is Silver Lane's Family Seal. This is the third boss of Shadow and Key. And this is the location. We run in and again we will step through all the mobs. It's a different color this time because we're not killing the, uh, the bosses in front of the third boss. Starting on this ledge we are going all around the boss. Um, this way we avoid to pull him preemptively. We are going to put up a hot on ourselves and pull the lever. This will trigger the mob by talking to him and open our door. We'll stick to the the line here on the right because the boss can actually stun us, uh, which will happen soon. Here he stuns me. And by moving on the ridge line here, the mob in front of us, the left one, will walk towards the boss. And we got some space between us and him, as you've seen right now. I'm just spamming re-stealth right now, because as soon as the two mobs in front of us are gonna reset, we can re-stealth and go all the way to the third boss. So just re-stealth, uh, yeah, don't fall down like me, time, and we will sprint our way all the way to the courtyard. We are entering the room of the third boss and you see this patrol that I marked. Um, we will gonna stay behind him and kill him on the stairs. It's important to not move up all the way to the stairs because you will see there will be patrols on top of us. So this is a good spot like in the middle of the stairs. And he hits quite hard. Uh, you can normally kill him in a uh, cat but as you can see I'm getting a lot of parries and blocks so I'll have to shift out, heal myself and go to bear. Um, yeah, this is the first mob. You have to clear him. Um, there's no way around. Oh, you can see the patrol on top. And don't be stupid as me. I did not bring any uh, water, so uh, give me a second. I will just regenerate my mana. On the bottom of the stairs, there are two mobs. We have to clear those. And you can see this one, Skull and X. We will pull Skull. Um, if you wait enough, you can wait until X patrols to the right and Skull to the left. As you see, they are, uh, there's enough wiggle room, but I'm just gonna kill both of them. If your gear is not as good as mine, you will probably uh, want to wait until they're separated. I'm pulling with Fairy Fire because it gives a significant damage boost and I'm just gonna pump through the first mob. You can heal between, but uh, I'm just gonna heal when the first mob is down. Yeah, just kill the second mob as well. Uh, these don't drop anything special, so it's not really worth killing more of those stress mobs. I'm just gonna re regen some mana, it's not important to be full mana, and pull the boss again, fairy fire him, and just nuke him in bear. Be careful because he puts up a 75% healing reduction, 
only heal when that uh, curse is lifted or uh, decurse yourself before healing. Um, the, the mobs before also gave you a debuff, so you might have to decurse twice. Yeah, as soon as you're done, just leave through the hallway and you're good because there's no real way to reset the dungeon. Besides leaving and re-entering, obviously. So we're going to the dead mines. Uh, dead mines have a lot of items. We are gonna kill all the end bosses for uh, the Cape of the Brotherhood, Black and Hardened Armor, and the Smite's Mighty Hammer, uh, which are all pre read bis. And we will also clear those two items uh, because I like cast loot as well. So um, first I'm gonna show you a lockout skip to actually get to the dungeon faster. This is especially interesting for Horde because you can be killed on PvP servers on the way. So just go down, lock out on this digging mole machine and yeah, you're in front of the dungeon. So this is our run. Again, we will stealth through most of it and I'm gonna show you what we are doing right now. As soon as we are here, we will go all the way into the corner and click through the lock because through the lock, we can actually click on the lever behind the door. This will open the door and we can just uh, run into this corner, which is a reset spot. Um, this is a great time to rebuff yourself if you forgot to do that. And then go into cat form and just spam your stealth ability. Because uh, as soon as we can re-stealth, 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 we can go all the way up through this corridor. Don't worry about the patrols. Um, yeah, just don't have them in your back when you're clicking this door. As soon as we enter, we will go to the right side because uh, clicking the door will make us leave stealth. We will have to wait for 10 seconds to re-stealth here. There are a lot of patrols in these rooms, but uh, most of the time they are not close to the door. So the one you're seeing in the middle of the room is a patrol and then there's one right behind us. Uh, the ones that are interesting is actually the boss, marked with X, uh, the skull one on our right. Make sure the skull one is not too close to you, just go into the corner, click through the lock again and run to the right side. This patrol um, that you're seeing, the mage, uh, he will not see you when you're standing behind this door frame. So just stick to the door frame, stealth and run through this corridor. There are three patrols in here, I marked them all, but they're not interesting, just run through this. On the bottom we got a mob I marked with skull. This one is the only patrol in the room. And he's the most interesting one because he patrols into the boss and we have to kill this boss. We would have to kill him or die to him if we want to uh, clear any of the other bosses, start for the castle loot. I like to kill, kill him because he can drop the um, 6 intellect and 3 edgy ring and that's really good for casters or for flag carriers. So I'm gonna open the door, um, just check that you're as far to the right as you can be until you click the lever because you only want to kill two of those mobs. Both of them have a melee cast, uh, it's molten metal or something. You can outrange that, just uh, run out of melee range, um, kill the ad and then proceed on the boss. If the patrol comes back, like it does in my case, it's always better to run to the other room and potentially kill another mob than the patrol because the patrol can summon another ad. I'm just gonna run in here. The patrol will leave, I pulled the cast and I'm just gonna kill him and that's it. After we did this, we will run all the way through this corridor. There's a patrol, a macro skull, it's running into the hallway with the dynamite, so we will have to wait for that one to leave. Kill those two peasants, um, pool your energy because uh, they tend to run, just when they run, just push through their health. Pick up the dynamite or the gunpowder and stealth because there will be a mob spawning so instantly stealth after picking up the gunpowder. We will go into the store frame and unstealth and wait for 10 seconds because we will re-stealth as soon as we click the cannon. We click the cannon and stealth again, skipping this patrol. We will run all across the docks and we need some wiggle room. This is the patrol, the only patrol in this room. We will need some wiggle room to uh, kill the boss, so I'm gonna clear this platform and the next one because um, yeah, it's the easiest way for us to clear the boss, so we have to clear this room. They tend to give good loot, there are some uh, rare drops that are selling for more than 20 or 30 silver, so just loot them. I got three of those, uh, I don't know what's, what they're called, the, the era, just 
uh, pets that sell for 11 silver, so it's really good. After clearing all those pirates, we will just uh, yeah switch our gear. I'm switching to my intellect set because I got uh, some items for intellect already. And I'm gonna switch my Fury of Storm Rage rune. This is important. Switch to Fury of Storm Rage. And also, um, I'm switching to Sunfire. This is not uh, as important, but uh, it's speeding up the process. We're gonna pull the two ads in front of Mr. Smite. You see, I face pulled the, the first one. And it's important to, to target both of them so we can see them. They will stay in stealth even if they attack you. So just attack both of them and jump on this ledge. This will make the mobs patrol through the water towards you. So just jump up and down the ledge. Don't push the boss first, because uh, if you push the boss, he will stun you and the adds will kill you. So kill both of the adds before the boss takes any damage. This is a lengthy process, I'm gonna speed this up 800% or something and just pushing it through so we can see what Mr. Smite drops for us this run. Um, yeah, kill the first head, kill the second one. Um, I'm just spending all my mana on uh, Moonfire and Sunfire because this uh, speeds up the process and our um, our Wrath is free anyway, so just spend all your mana on Moonfire and Sunfire. He stuns us periodically, uh, it does not really matter. Mr. Smite's down and we can loot him. After looting him, we will stealth run all through these mobs and all the way to the top. Uh, we're gonna skip all of these and behind those cannons. Behind those cannons we will heal up and kill this mob. We have changed back to our melee rooms, so we are using Nangle and um, the Wind Fury room again. We will clear this deck, just the lower deck of this. Um, make sure to just pull them one by one or two, uh, two at once, never three, just like I did, and we can reset on the wheel because I overpulled. I'm just gonna continue pulling all of these one by one, kill them all, and we have enough space to clear all the bosses. So just the Zest one, and as soon as we clear this one, I'm gonna proceed and switch back to my caster runes, or I'm gonna switch back as soon as I on the top. I'm gonna mark the boss with skulls so I know which target to focus, and I'm gonna mark all of those, uh, yes. The purple pirates because these can uh, frost over me and I tend to die to those so I'm just gonna mark all of those to keep in mind where they are. Yeah, I'm stealthing through this and actually now I'm switching back to my caster set going to Fury of Stone Rage again and Sunfire Rune. This time Sunfire is important. I'm gonna pull Gilnet here and Captain Greenskin I mean. Uh, dot him up and jump down here. Behind those cannons you can walk and just wait until the boss is leaving because he can smack you through the top of the, the roof. Uh, there's uh, no line of sight preventing him to do that so we can walk behind those cannons. Those cannons on the bottom floor, the th three ones here, are just walk through, just walk through them and wait for the boss to path around the boat, drop down here, go up the ramp again. I may have jumped down a little early, you can wait like a little bit more to, to be safer, to have more room. Um, I'm just gonna dot him up again. Sunfire, Moonfire, you can, uh, you probably won't be in caster spec, so there's no insect swarm. And this time I'm gonna wait a little bit longer for him to reset, so I can uh, get at least one wrath off. Um, I'm using the right side of the boat. I, I could also let him path all the way around to the left side. Uh, but I see that the casters that I marked are in front of him, so I'm just gonna stick to having him patrol all the way around the right side of the boat, so I can kill him up here, because this way I only have one caster in front of him. I'm just gonna proceed to, to speed this process up and kill him by wiggling him down, just uh, casting one, one Wrath on the top of the boat and Sunfire and Moonfire. I'm gonna repeat this process and Till he's dead. As soon as uh, Captain Greenskin dies, I'm gonna reset here on the wheel and wait until all the mobs are moving up 
towards the ramp again. Uh, just spending time reporting some players here. <laughs> now, I'm gonna stealth all the way up again. You can actually kill only Edwin Van Cleef if you are not interested in Captain Greenskin because you don't need his stuff. Just uh, pull him whenever the patrol is behind the boat, the hut. And we're gonna kill him exactly the same way, but since Van Cleef is running a bit faster than Captain Greenskin, he's uh, this time pathing all the way ahead of all the casters. You can see the maps that I marked are all behind him. And this is the reason I'm gonna decide to actually kill him on the lower part of the boat. So I'm just gonna wait here and as soon as he paths around I'm gonna hit him with a Wrath and Sunfire, Moonfire. Remember there are two stealth mobs running around so they can, can pop out anytime. Don't be afraid of those mobs. Let them hit you for a bit. They don't have kicks, stunts or anything. Just let them hit, it, hit you for a bit until the rest of the mobs are catching up to them. Um, this is not gonna happen this run. Just remember if the mobs hit you just wait until they uh, are close to the other mobs again. Um, yeah, I'm jumping off uh, on the far side here. This might be too long, so I'm just uh, gonna proceed to, to run a shorter route uh, as soon as Van Cleef is here again. Uh, essentially, this is the same way as we killed Ginnett before. I'm taking this time uh, to remind you, I'm new to all this YouTube stuff, but I realized that actually, yeah, subscribing, commenting, or uh, even hitting the like button actually means something if you uh, videos get way more views if uh, people do that so if you like this guide just hit the like button doesn't cost you anything or type something like i enjoyed this video and i found the hidden uh, information <laughs> uh, to make the youtube algorithm happy this would mean a lot to me and we're just going to proceed to see me killing when cleave and whenever he's dead i'm going to use the wheel again to uh, reset back and loot him. And we actually got the cape of the defiers in this run, so uh, there's, so you will at least have to kill him twice. Uh, the cape and the breast piece uh, are both dropping from him. So resetting on the wheel, running back up towards Van Cleef. Uh, don't run through those mobs uh, when they're resetting, they might re aggro, so just stare through them. And that's it. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye!